Hi dear students, in this special series on subject wise strategy, we are going to identify all the important topics that you must keep in mind before you start working on a subject. We will be looking at the trend for each subject and then mapping it to all the tasks in the app so that you can prepare better and score better. In this video, we will be discussing the strategy for general surgery. Now general surgery is a very easy subject because there is very limited content that you need to focus. But it gets a little complicated when you get oral surgery into picture and there are parallel topics amongst the two. Also with general surgery, you have to keep in mind the applied anatomy of that area. So surgery and anatomy will also go hand in hand. So when we discuss the trend of these questions, we also must keep in mind the parallel questions that will appear in anatomy and oral surgery. Right? So the proposed weightage for general surgery is 14 questions in your NEET MDS exam and it keeps fluctuating over the years. Like the previous year, uh, number of questions is 13 but before that it was much lesser to 7. So you can expect any highs and lows with regards to general surgery and because this is relatively an easier topic, it takes lesser time to prepare especially if you know which topics to focus on. So here what we will do is we will look at all the questions from previous NEET MDS exam and allocate them to specific topics, right? Because everyone wants to know what are the most important topics for each subject. So you will get an idea of what topics to focus more on and what topics are not as important. For example, the first question here is on thyroidectomy. And the patient, he, there is a case based question on exploration of the surgical site. Bouts of clots were found. What happened to the patient? This is reactionary hemorrhage, right? So that goes to thyroid gland and complications of thyroidectomy surgery. Then a female had elbow trauma, came with injury to the brachial artery, which is the ideal suture material. So that's fractures and dislocation. Revised trauma score includes all except pulse rate. 46 year old patient had severe cramping pain in the lower leg after sternus exercise and there is compartment syndrome. What is the advice treatment? Fasciotomy. So this is arterial and venous, venous disorders. Mother of newborn brings the child with a unilateral cleft lip and feeding difficulties. What would you advise? When would you advise surgery? Very important question cleft lip and palate. Also, you will find more questions on cleft lip and palate under orthodontics. Unilateral cleft lip is due to non-union of median nasal process and maxillary process. You can also expect this question to fall under embryology. Then there is an image based question of a patient undergoing thyroidectomy and you have to identify the muscle. Now in this clinical scenario, it is sternohyoid. Then here, next question is road traffic accident. After two hours, the patient develops cold extremities, hypotension, identify the type of shock. So that goes to shock and hemorrhage. Then after thyroid surgery, a 28 year old patient develops dyspnea, dysphagia, hoarseness of voice, which nerve is injured? Bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve. Preoperatively localized parathyroid adenoma is surgically managed by removal of the parathyroid glands. Critical management of child who requires immediate hospitalization. So these are emergencies and we'll classify that as head injury. Tumor in posterior mediastinum will compress the esophagus. So these are the swellings. Now you'll see a lot of swelling ulcers in surgery and it's very easy to uh, merge these swellings under oral path as well. Thyroid lymphoma occurs in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Again, a thyroid question. Identify the procedure. Here there is a palatoplasty, cleft lip and palate. Wound healing is accelerated in hyperthermia. So factors affecting wound healing. Of course, you can find the explanation. So the explanation will have a detailed table and a key concept. Make sure you read the explanation in detail. And you can also watch the video explanation which will help you understand parallel topics 
in detail it will help you understand how to eliminate options and give you a more elaborate idea on the question then the next question is obstructive shock is caused by tension pneumothorax shock and hemorrhage again neurogenic shock punched out ulcers very popular question seen in syphilis then a case based question of a 23 year old male with slow growing swelling in the neck swelling is bilaterally transilluminant this is an example of a lymphangioma then clinical identification of trachea the most common site for securing iv cannula in long syphilis vein for resuscitation is anterior to the medial malleolus applied uh, aspects of fluid management which of the following is not a feature of superficial burns first question on burns so far child presents with swelling in the midline of the neck this is moving on swallowing this is thyroglossal duct cyst you can go through the explanation for each of these topics you can watch the video explanation without fail and take down notes from these explanations because that will help you in your revision phase right then a thyroid scan of a patient with graves disease so that will be assigned to diseases of thyroid gland 55 year old male with this swelling at the corner of the mouth of the lymph node this is a lymphoma then a man with progressive swelling on the thighs which are soft painless and non pulsatile and compressible example of a cavernous hemangioma look at the images carefully whenever you have an image based question then speech assessment for clp is done at the age of 18 months what does the red tag indicate with reference to surgical triage it's the individual requiring immediate treatment so that's shock and hemorrhage you can also classify that as head injury question a non pulsatile swelling is likely to be vascular in origin so arterial and venous disorders which of the following is a surgical technique for varicose vein again another question of uh, arterial and venous disorders then emergency tracheostomy you have to check the intratracheal pressure we'll classify that as a disease of larynx then a bedridden patient who's febrile and having a left leg swelling vascular issues champagne bottle leg are seen in varicose veins arterial problems a tailor with an abscess on his fingertip due to needle prick injury while sewing the physician wants to treat the condition the preferable local anesthetic agent is infiltration with la so that's an infection then flap located near a defect but not in immediate proximity with retained blood supply is called a regional flap parkland formula for burns patient presented with hemorrhagic swelling in the respiratory obstruction with thyroid surgery this question is repeating this is reactionary hemorrhage the identification of trachea is repeating earlier we had a clinical image which was of the dissection which was of the surgical field this is a this is an illustration serum calcitonin is raised in medullary carcinoma then a clinical question on swelling it is single soft mobile slips on holding this is a lipoma slip sign is positive in lipoma then another swelling which is a thyroid nodule the patient has a history of weight loss and taking att 2 years ago test for lymphedema the gold standard is lymphocytography coagulant used in the blood sample for glucose analysis fluoride this can also fall under pathology or blood transfusion in case of surgery okay then a patient presents with painful swelling in the periauricular region since one month and here this is because of a sialolith so the treatment of choice is superficial parotidectomy then a baby is born with unilateral cleft lip deformity the repair corrective surgery at 5 or 6 months 
type of intubation in CLP, orotracheal. Then in SAG M solution, the RBC can be preserved by for up to five weeks. That's related to blood products and transfusion. To safeguard against post-surgical infection, the surgical site should be monitored for 30 days to avoid complications. This is from wound healing. Bed sores are types of trophic ulcer. Pylonidal sinus contains pylonidal sinus contains dead hair. So that's an infection. Calcitonin secretion is increased. We had a similar question before on medullary carcinoma. Again, syphilitic ulcers have punched out appearance. This is a repeat question. Squamous cell carcinoma is an ulcer with rolled out everted edges. So all the different types of ulcers and their edges are important. Okay, Sloping edge, undermined edge, punched out, raised, everted and the clinical situations where you will see them. Surgery for CLP, the lip correction is done at 4 to 5 months. Unilateral cleft lip and palate is repaired around 4 to 5 months and 18 months for heart palate. Remember that too. And last question is Himlish manure in infants is done for foreign body obstruction due to inhalation. That's an emergency. So that brings us to a good summary of the questions in general surgery. And as you can see, swellings and ulcers and tumors are most commonly asked followed by cleft lip and palate, venous disease, arterial and venous and thyroid. Surprisingly, 10, 12 questions from thyroid, which is a relatively smaller topic. So your focus here should be on these swellings, especially thyroid and all the other swellings in the head neck face. And that also means that lesser questions have been asked on burns, head injury, fractures and dislocation, diseases of larynx and pharynx. But do not neglect them because you can always have newer questions from these uh, less popular topics. Now, how do you apply this information for your preparation? So when you open your app and when you go to task modules and when you go to surgery, you will see all these tasks in surgery. These tasks are similar to what you just saw in the topic. So whatever topics on the left side, you will find identical tasks in the app. Now task is a building block. It is the foundation and you must practice all of these uh, tasks first before moving on to more advanced things. For example, if you want to prepare any of these topics, the first thing to do is look at the content. So you go to prepare. So when you open a task, you will see bytes and workbook, right? And you can go through the entire content, which must be given in flowcharts, tables, you know, with a lot of mnemonics. So learn, learn, go through all of these uh, topics in detail, prepare them, look at the videos which are attached to these workbook bytes and then you can either practice your questions or you can take test. It is necessary, like I said, to complete all of these tasks before moving on to advanced stage of your preparation. And now I will tell you how to maximize your preparation with Meritor's app. Now there are five things to keep in mind when you start your preparation for any subject at any given point of time. Number one is to start with tasks. Like I said, tasks are the building blocks. They are your foundation and fundamental for any subject. You need to start preparing for the task with the workbook. You, you must look at the video if you have any doubts regarding the topic and then practice questions and then you can take the test. Now, whenever you are taking a test or practicing questions, each question comes with the answer, explanation and key concept. The explanation will be elaborate. It will tell you everything that you need to know about the topic. It is a good source of taking down notes because a lot of additional questions can be asked from the existing explanations, right? And if you are well versed with the topic, you can just look at the key concept and reinforce the topic in your mind. Additionally, a lot of questions also come with multiple choice question videos, which are explanatory videos. They are going to talk about how to eliminate options, how to strategically focus on the question and additional knowledge that comes with the topic. So your first aim should be to complete all these tasks for a given subject.
and then move on to the next thing that is Q bank. Now Q bank or question bank is a collection of high yield extensive questions. They are clubbed together in uh, topics. They are clubbed together chapter wise and you will have more hands on experience on difficult and extensive preparation on these questions. Again, they will come with explanatory videos, explanations and key concepts. So once your tasks and Q bank for a given subject are complete, you are good to appear for the weekly checkpoint tests. Now the tests are of two types in the app. One is the weekly checkpoint test and self paced test. I'll tell you about the weekly checkpoint test first. So suppose if you are preparing one subject over the week, then at the end of the week, you will have a test which is going to focus on that specific subject plus the subjects that were previously prepared, right? So that kind of snowballs the entire revision strategy. You will have a repeated encounter of multiple subjects from time to time. So you do not forget. It's easier to keep these topics in mind when you constantly see them. So the revision is reinforced. Plus you also get personalized AI recommendations, right? So at the end of your test, based on your performance, you will get how many questions you answered, what was the score, how much was the negative marking, where are you lacking, what are your stronger points? And then it will tell you how much time to dedicate for a revision of your weaker subjects. So with this strategy, you will be able to focus on specific areas that are your weaknesses. Now that is an exceptional feature of Meritor's app. And the next set of test is self paced test, which you can take at any given point of time. These are subject wise tests. You can also have cumulative tests, multiple recall questions also incorporated in form of tests. And towards the end of your preparation phase, you will have a lot of volatile factual high yield questions uh, in form of final strokes, which are again specialized tests to be able to remember these topics clearly before the exam. Now, once you come closer towards the end of your preparation, you will have access to this special feature of the app called Marathon. This is activated towards the end of your preparation where you will have 3500 plus high yield questions. High yield questions meaning they have the chances to uh, be seen in the exam because either they are based on recall questions or because they are based on important concepts that are repeatedly seen in the exam. So when you practice these 3500 plus questions, you will also enter an all India competition where you will get a fair idea as to how your performance is with comparison to your colleagues. It's a great boost of confidence if you take it at the right time. And lastly, we have the all famous national mocks, which is a pan India or all India nationwide uh, simulation of NEET MDS exam. We conduct them uh, towards the end of your preparation in a few months to go. And every weekend you will have access to this special test. You will see a lot of new questions in national mocks, uh, which are based on important topics. So do not miss national mocks because it gives you a good hands on experience of the exam. It gives you an idea of time management because this is exactly according to neat pattern. That is 240 questions and three hours with negative marking. So you, you kind of get a very fair and square idea of your performance because this is again an all India competitive uh, mock exam and you will get personalized AI recommendations here as well. Now they are more important for uh, national mocks too because uh, towards the end when you are revising you will not know which subject to pick up at what time and your performance in the national mock will be assessed thoroughly and you will get your AI recommendations which will tell you which subjects to revise. So make sure that you are making use of all of these features in the app. Now, apart from that, if there is any query that you have while solving your questions, if you have any doubts regarding any topics, you can always contact the faculty on the WhatsApp group. We are always here to help you. And I hope with this in mind, you will be able to channelize all your preparation strategy in the right direction. And I hope we'll be able to help you achieve your dream seat in MDS. Thank you so much and good luck from Team Meritors.